Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a bouncing ball in Adobe Animate. Now you may think, I'm not completely new to this, I can already animate a bouncing ball. But the workflow of Adobe Animate is something you need to get a little bit familiar with and I'm going to show you a classic way how we, uh, we used to do it, how we still do it. And I'm going to show you a newer way and I'm also going to show you some options that are fairly new to Adobe Animate. And even if you have been using Adobe Animate for a long time, you might not know about these and it can save you a lot of time and it may give you a new insight into Adobe Animate and uh, how things work. So let's get started. So the first technique on how to do this, I'm going to show you with nested animation. And I'll show you how tricky that can be if you're new to Adobe Animate, but I'm also going to show you how to solve some things if you're already a little bit more advanced in Adobe Animate and I'll show you right now. Obviously it's quite simple to just create a classic tween. Let me make this a little longer and I'm gonna put down some keyframes for the bouncing ball. I'm gonna make them smaller and smaller. This is just a really easy way to do this quickly because I know where the ball is gonna end up about half of the time. There we go. And then let's remove that tweening there. And right here, I'm just gonna move this ball up. I'm gonna hold shift and a little bit less here and a little bit less here. I'm just gonna go do shift up arrow. There we go. Well, obviously that's gonna look bad because I didn't add any easing. I'm gonna do that real quick. So I'm going to select all the parts where it goes up to adjust the easing. That's gonna be an ease out. So I'm gonna click classic ease right there and I'm gonna select ease out and then quad is always really nice and I'm gonna do the opposite to the other frames where it goes down it's gonna select in between them I don't have to select the keyframe I, I press control to make sure that happens and I'm gonna select between them and I do ease in I say quad double click to apply and if I play it now that looks like a smooth bouncing ball but then there's the the issue that if you want to make it move left to right as well a lot of people i see a lot of people do this and it's going to move this a little bit and then move this a little bit the easing on this will not look good look at this that's not how a ball bounces and obviously it bounces back because i didn't do it to all the frames but that does not look good and that's because the motion up and the motion down has different easing than it moving left to right right how do i split that so the first technique I'm gonna show you is the nested way. That means I'm gonna nest this whole animation. I'm gonna click this animation and normally I would just go into it and then make the animation there. But luckily there's a new way to turn this into a symbol. If you didn't know about this, I, I'm selecting the layer. I'm gonna right click the layers and I say convert layers to symbols. And it will give me a pop up and I will say this and bouncing ball. And right now everything is in there. So if I double click on it, you can see the bouncing ball is still in there. I'm in the bouncing ball right now. And as I select the scene, I go out of it. And right now I can just make another tween, classic tween, put a keyframe down and then say, move it all the way to that little wall that I drew. And then maybe a keyframe back. So this is where it stops bouncing. So I want to stop it here. Maybe, maybe leave and make it roll out a little bit. And so I got this right now. Boom, 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 boom. Well, it stops a little hard. So let's put an ease in there as well. Classic ease, ease out. What? Let's see if that looks good. That looks pretty good. However, if I want to move this keyframe, let's say I uh, it's not bouncing fast enough or it reaches the wall too late. So let's move that a little bit. See what happens now. So I move that keyframe. See what happens now. If you look closely, you can see it glitch. It's going there and then it jumps from there to there. What's happening? What's happening? So what actually happens if I select this keyframe and if I actually select a symbol, and I scroll down right here, I can see that it's on looping and it's showing me the first frame. However, if I'm right there and I select it, it says it's on 43, but I just moved it from 43 to 55. Now the old way of doing this where uh, uh, animators would just go like, oh fine, I'll just select this one and I will say like, okay, well, what's it on? And so it's on 55, I'm just gonna manually type in 55. And if you got like 100 keyframes and you move up a little bit, you have to do that to all the keyframes. Well, <laughs> that's a lot of work. I even see like professional animators that I've been using Adobe Animate for years struggle with that. Luckily, you don't have to. If I'm just gonna select my layer or select a number of keyframes, you have to select more than one keyframe for one, uh, some reason. And I'm gonna right click the layer I'm gonna say synchronize symbols so now it will actually look at the number where it's on and get grab the keyframe and will automatically put it to oh let me just select it the, the symbol otherwise it's not gonna show up pop up there we go it's on 55 so if I decide to make this a little shorter and make that a little longer 
Now that animation doesn't sync anymore because that's 107 and right now it's on 103. You see, those are off and that one probably will be off too because that's on 55 now and it's already on 47. So that's off. So instead of manually setting those keyframes, I'm just gonna select the layer, right click it, synchronize symbols and everything will be good again. So let's see how that looks. A little bit too much. I'm gonna do that again. Click the layer, right click, synchronize symbols and a little, still a little too fast over there. Like I said, I can do it on one frame for some reason, and, but if I select a like, few of them, it's gonna right click, synchronize symbols, and then there we go. Oh, well, looks pretty good. So all the animation is nested into that symbol right there, and everything is moving accordingly. There's one more way that I wanna show you guys, and that's the parenting technique. Now this one is fairly new to Adobe Animate, and parenting is still a little, a little buggy, but for simple things like this, this is fine. So I'm just gonna make a new layer and we're gonna make a new a little square. Now, in, normally in Adobe After Effects, that would be like a guide object, but if we're using Adobe Animate, I'm just gonna make a little square. I'm just gonna turn it into, into a symbol with F8 and I'm gonna call it a guide. There we go. I'm gonna put it, uh, what doesn't really matter, I'm just gonna put it right there. And I got my little parenting window right there. So I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna select that bouncing ball and I'm gonna drag it on, the, on top of that one. Now I'm gonna maybe put the same exact animation in there. So let me just uh, fast forward. And instead of using this little window right here, I'm just gonna use shortcuts. And if you check out another video of mine in the description, I will show you how to make those shortcuts and it will make your life a lot easier. So if I'm gonna press enter now, that will look like a really floating bouncing ball, like more like on the moon or it's like more like a balloon. That's fine for now. But as you can see, I parented that object and I did it on the start. Don't do it afterwards. So I did it on the start and I'll show you why you shouldn't do it afterwards. I'm gonna put a little bit of classic tween right there. And right at that point, I think somewhere around that point, I can move that square and you can see the bouncing ball moves with it. And maybe make it move back a little bit, add a little easing, ease out, there we go. So if I play that now, you can see that block moving. Obviously you want it to be gone if you export it. See, there we go, that you don't want that square to actually be there. And there's a really a simple way of doing that. Just set it to a guide and maybe even turn it off if you're not using it. So if you export it now, you'll see just the ball and not the square. And that's all for today. Like I said, I showed you two ways of doing this, uh, one with the nested technique and one with parenting technique. The parenting technique is not the most ideal way. There are ways of doing that if you really want to. And like I said, it's still a little buggy. And I showed you how to take a layer and put it into a symbol real quick. And I also showed you how to quickly synchronize those symbols if you move them around. So that's all for today. Um, I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please join the Discord or let us know in the comments. See you later. Bye-bye.